Hello and welcome to today's first online event for 2014, webinars that make you go wow. New tools and new features for the new year. Today is all about uncovering the Redback platform and helping you take your webinar series to the next level. I might also remind you that today's session does fall under the intermediate to advanced level, meaning that we won't be covering the basics of the platform. Let's get started. First of all, I'd like to welcome our presenter for today, who may be a familiar face to many of you. He is the Product Manager for Managed Events here at Redback Conferencing. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Michael Bunker. How are you today, Michael? Very good, Sarah. Thank you very much for having me. Great. So I think, first of all, it might be worthwhile to get started with a poll. Um, now, this poll is really just to get to know who's actually on the line. So I'm going to launch that now. Um, now, the question is really just asking you to be honest. So which of the following features have you used in your webinars? So we're talking PowerPoint presentations, which I'm guessing may be quite common for most of you online. We're also talking Q&A chat functionality, which is what we used earlier on to communicate uh, in the bottom left-hand corner videos and webcams, polling, which is exactly what we're doing now, the in-room surveys, the presence manager, the audio chat, and the layout manager, which are entirely new features. So it'll be interesting to see how many people have used those. And we're going to stop the poll now. And Michael, I might just refer to you here. So are you surprised to see that the majority of people are really looking at PowerPoint presentations for the webinars that they conduct? No, that's predominantly the standard for all webinar bases, so then no surprise there. I am quite, I'm not really surprised as well to see that no one's really took the in-room survey or the presence manager as they are new products just being released. Great. Okay, so let's start, let's close the poll and now let's talk about the features. So like I said earlier, today is all about WOW and enhancing your webinars, making it more exciting and more engaging and more inspiring for your attendees. So let's start with the new features and I believe we're going to kick things off with something called in-room survey, Michael. Yes, we are. So in-room surveys. In-room surveys is a brand new module just released by the platform. What this is, it allows you to survey your participants during your live webinar. It's a great tool for gathering information and testing learnings, as well as um, seeing if people are understanding the message you're trying to deliver. Now, a recommendation that we do here at Redback is that we sometimes ask clients to pre-survey their clients or their attendees before they join a webinar. That way, trying to get an understanding of what they're going to be, the messages to be delivered. And then during the actual webinar, survey them again in the middle and the end to make sure that their understanding is going through each process and each step of their webinar. So it's really about engaging everyone before, during and after the webinar as many times as possible to make sure they're in the moment, would you say? Definitely, definitely. It also makes sure that the engagement's right up there so people are really attentive and really paying attention to what's happening during your webinar. Great. Now, if we go back into in-room surveys, let's talk about some considerations and what does the reporting look like? It's all well and good for someone to complete a survey, but at the end of it, how do we collect that information and do something with it? Okay. So the considerations are, well, I'll go into reporting first. So reporting is a couple of different ways that you get it. So you receive that from your event manager or from Redback support. And what that is, it's graphs and uh, a downloadable CSV file of everyone's answers throughout the entire managed webinar or the webinar. And what it also does, is it splits it up in each question that you've asked. You get multiple responses for each person. And as we can see on the screenshot, we do provide nice colorful graphs, pie charts with percentages of who answered what and when. Now, the need to knows for the in-room survey is that you can only have a maximum of six questions per survey. So the beauty of this, though, is that you can have multiple surveys in your managed webinar. So you can have one specifically designed in the beginning, middle, and end, and have each one of those collating your responses through it. Now, you can only choose from five fields, and this can be created from within the platform at any time. So if you want to do a survey on the flight, you can do this as well, which is really great. Now, the live response times is a good thing to add, is that while you actually have the survey up on the screen, you can see the responses coming through. So you can see, okay, well, we have 56 people online and 27 people have answered it. You might want to leave it open for a little bit longer before moving on, trying to get some more responses. Yeah. Um, now, also, just so everyone knows, we are going to activate this feature towards the end um, when we can actually get some of your feedback, so we're using the product in live time. Um, and also, just to note um, to everyone online, we will actually be sending the recording out to you along with the supporting documents and step-by-step -step tutorials on how to activate all these features. So we're purely covering the educational part of it today, and then hopefully afterwards you'll be able to put these into practice with the tutorials that we send you uh, moving forward. 
Okay, moving on, in-room surveys. And once again, any questions, please let us know. Presence manager. Now, is this like the big brother tool right here, Michael? <laughs> Pretty much. The presence manager allows you to monitor the interactivity of your pres uh, participants during your managed webinar. I love this tool. This tool is absolutely great for CPD. So anyone that's doing continual professional development point webinars, what you can do is you can base an average of response time and then measure your participants so at the end they get a total score and if they've reached that total score, they pass and they can get their certificate. So the screenshot here shows you the bit of the settings of how you build your presence manager. So what it is, is it's a message pop-up box that comes up on your screen during an interval. So right now we've got it right now. So Sarah's just demonstrated that, so I'll get everyone to click on the OK. What this does is the pop-up box comes up randomly between two designated time slots, so 10 to 20 minutes, and this can pop up at any time. It will only appear for a certain amount of seconds that you allocate, and that gives your uh, participants a very small chance of time to click the OK button, and every time they click that OK, it goes against their name and they get scored on that. So at the end, when you get your reporting, you can see what the score is for every one of your participants, and then if they reach the 80% or 90%, they actually pass. So it's a great Big Brother tool. Mm. So you can really now see who's actually checking their emails, who's actually dreaming off somewhere else in space by using this feature. Exactly. Okay, once again, so let's just talk more about the reporting and the considerations for the presence manager. Okay, so the reporting, it's uh, again downloadable CSV, you get that from Redback support. And the considerations I have is that you can launch, you launch this from your tools. So the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now, everyone should be able to see the little tools button. From within there, if you're a presenter or moderator, this is where you'll be able to control and so, uh, set up all of your presence manager functionality and then launch it from there. You can have custom messages and you can create it on the fly. So even halfway through, if you want to make sure that people are actually still paying attention, you don't have to launch it from the beginning. You can choose it at any time you want to launch it. Great to know. Um, now, once again, any questions on that, please let us know. Um, let's talk about something which I'm really excited about, um, and this is advanced PowerPoint. And I think, um, judging by the poll earlier on and people talking about how much PowerPoint they're using in their webinars, this is going to be quite useful for most people online. Oh, definitely. So the difference between our platform and many other ones is that we're actually uploading the PowerPoint in its original format. So we're not taking flat J JPEG images of it, so we get to keep all the animations the thumbnails, the notes, so you don't have to have a, your papers next to you and rustling through them while you're uh, presenting. You can have your notes up on the screen. Uh, animations, annotations, and events on uh, keyboard strokes is all part of the platform for you. So you can really customize your presentation and really bring it to life through the platform. And that's great, especially for presenters, I guess, when they are creating their um, PowerPoint. They don't actually have to have their notes next to them. No. Um, they have it all on screen. So it's a great little tool there as well, which is also very exciting. Well, it um, keeps you engaged because if you have your notes up on the screen, you're not looking off to the side like we are now. So if, we have, if I look down to the side, I'm not paying attention to the, co um, the end users. Yeah, great. Um, and that's all available within the platform now. Is that right, Michael? Yes, it is. Okay. Good. Um, okay, so that's a nice quick one. Now let's move on to something which is also quite exciting and engaging. So um, audio chat. So audio chat, new functionality. As everyone knows on the web webinar platform right now is that you can type your questions in, but a great new feature is you can submit a vocal question. So if you want to and you have a laptop or a PC that has a microphone built into it, you can speak your question into there, submit it through the chat box, and then what we can do as a um, presenter is either preview the question and listen to it just ourselves, and then if it's an appropriate question and moderate it, we can then play it through the room for everyone to hear. It's just a new way of getting your... Uh, participants more involved in your presentation, instead of them just having to read up the questions, it adds an extra layer and dimension to your presentation. Great. Um, now this one I'm a little bit interested in because I personally don't know much about it. Um, it is something to do with the webcams. Um, please explain. Okay, on air, off air, camera, webcam control, I love this. It's quite a cool, funky little toy. Whoever came up with this was quite ingenious. What it allows you to do, it allows you to have all of your presenter cameras up and running, but you're only showing your participants the person speaking. So you get to control as a moderator every camera feed and have it just coming through to your audience when you want it to. So if you have a panel discussion, it would be great to, so right now we have four, a screenshot of four 
webcams up, you can see three of them have off-air written on them. As a moderator or facilitator, I can choose which camera I want to show and when. So if we had a Q&A session with multiple presenters and a question came through for a specific one, instead of having everyone's cameras up, I could just have myself and the person who's going to be answering the question up. Okay, so once again, like you said, really good for panel discussions and um, especially those who may suffer from bandwidth issues. Definitely. Because you're keeping them all running in the background, the end user doesn't actually see all of those or receive all of those feeds. It's only the moderator and the presenters who have that issue. Great. Okay, so now we're going to move on to another wow factor of the platform, and this is the layout options, and I'm pretty sure that not everyone knows that they can actually customise the layout of their web conference, and they can actually do this on the fly as well. So um, one of the things that we've discovered, in, especially in the past with a lot of our customers, is while you do have access to these features, what works and what doesn't work. So um, you're getting a bit of an inside scoop today as Michael's going to take you through the new layout options um, and different options for different audiences and also depending on the type of webinar that you're hosting. So let's talk about the single, ca single camera shot. Okay. Which is right there. Perfect. So single camera shot. What this allows you to do is to really focus on the presentation and keep the camera. So right now, Sarah and I have a two presenter view happening right now. So we have the two webcams happening on the right panel. In the center we have the slides and on the far left we have the participants list and the ch chat box. What you can do if you only have one presenter is you can actually undock the camera from here and pop it into the participant list. And what that allows you to do is upload a PowerPoint presentation in 16 by 9 and fill that whole section. So if you are doing anything with a lot of content or a lot of text, you want to maximize how big your slides are, definitely go for this because you can have a much bigger slide in that panel. And then also, having the single camera over on the left-hand side in the uh, participant list, you can use the on-air, off-air functionality to switch between people as well. So if you do have multiple presenters, but no facilitator, and just one person doing a presentation to the next, you can easily use the on-air, off-air cam camera functionality to switch between the two. So a lot of this um, is really um, liaising with your presenter before the actual webinar and getting, making sure that you know what the format and the layout of your presentation is going to be and designing the slides around that. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. Making sure you understand what their messages are trying to deliver and then building a layout to match that. Great. Multi-presenter, this is us, right? Yes, this is us right now. So as we can see, we have the two cameras as we demonstrated before. In the center, we have a 4 by 3 slide, and that's because we have taken up real estate with the cameras. But this is great for, as you can see, a single presenter and a facilitator talking back and forth, interacting with the audience. This is the layout that you want to have. If you did have more than two presenters, you can use the on-air, off-air camera functionality so that Sarah's would be the only camera staying on for the entire one as facilitator, but we could switch out the presenters at any time. Great. And I guess this one's probably one of the more common ones, would you say? Yes, this is a very yeah. common one. We see this quite often. Now, the panel presentation. Yes, so the panel presentation, this is great and a number of our clients use this. What we recommend is that you don't have the slides up for the beginning, you hide the slide panel completely and you just have the cameras up. So you introduce all six or all eight or all three to five presenters at the very beginning. And once you've introduced them, switch all the cameras off except for the very first person who's got to be presenting and switch the layout back to show the slides. What this allows you to do is save on those bandwidth issues as well for regional viewers, especially if they're having low bandwidth with the problems, um, and then at the very end, switch back to the camera view only and have your Q&A with everyone up so that you can ask questions too. Ah, got it. Now this one, this one looks interesting, the large video. Large video, I really like this, and I don't think it gets used enough. What this is, it's especially if you have like a boardroom setup where you have a lot of people sitting in the same room all having to speak or collaborate, you can undock the video camera and uh, increase the dimension of it and lock in a corner for all your participants to view. The only considerations when doing this is that you're actually going to take up some of the slide position, so you need to know when building your slides not to put anything in that bottom corner. Another great use for this is if you're having a hybrid event where you're taking a live physical event with someone speaking at a lectern and broadcasting that on the internet, you can easily do that for this. Okay, so when you say hybrid event, are you talking maybe like a live conference um, and then taking that and um, being able to project that online? Is that, is that Definitely. Right? Yep. We're taking a physical event that's already happening with a live audience in the room, and you're wanting to extend that to an online audience as well. So right. a lot of issues, a lot of, not issues, a lot of people that do that are education-based ones, professors, uh, boardroom, uh, company announcements, those sorts of events. 
Great. So definitely a lot of different options there with the layout. Um, and once again, like we said, it's really about customising per webinar. So you may have a series of 12 webinars, but you may be wanting to convey a different message throughout the webinar. Um, one may be uh, very video orientated, one may be very PowerPoint orientated. So really deciding your layout is quite important, isn't it, Michael? Very. Great. Okay, so wow, let's wow for the third time now. And let's talk about tips for presenting. Um, so just a bit of a background and to put this in context, um, earlier every February, and most of you will be receiving this shortly, we go out and we get some feedback on the Australian Conference in Landscape and specifically webinars and webcasting. Um, so the idea of that is to get feedback from people in terms of their experiences as online attendees. Um, so last year what we found, and from a lot of experience from our customers, was that everything revolves around the presenter. So you could have the most amazing presentation, you could have the best technology, you could know exactly what you're doing, but if your presenter isn't comfortable with the technology and they don't know how to present online, it really can mean the difference between good and great, can't it, Michael? Very much, yes. Yeah, so let's break this up and let's talk about um, tips not only with the platform and how they should be using it, but let's also talk a little bit about the presenting style and what's required um, to run a successful online event as a presenter. Nice. Perfect. So it's all about engagement. You're wanting to get people to interact with a PowerPoint presentation, with yourself as a presenter. You want to encourage discussion, even to um, down your presenting style where if you are on webcam like we are now, you want to be presenting to a friend. You want to be speaking to someone as if you were sitting across from one of your best friends and informing them on a topic. Um, you want to promote individuals, so looking in the chat box in the bottom left-hand corner and recognizing a name and calling on them to interact is quite an, an, a way to encourage discussion and get people involved. Um, using rhetorical questions is a good one as well. Connect with attendees, so connecting out there. So right now we've got, sorry, prompting individuality, I just had someone make me laugh. So again, having people on an online forum can distract you while you're presenting, but makes it human because we all are human and we will have these moments in presenting. Uh, gesturing within restraints. As you can see, my hands keep popping up into my camera feed and I'm trying really hard not to go too high or too wide because otherwise I kind of look a little bit crazy. But again, you're wanting to make sure you have soft eyes, soft expression and connecting with people as if you're speaking with a friend. It's the best presenting tip of all. Do you want to, yeah. So platform tools. Sarah, did you want to touch on this for a moment? Absolutely. Um, so once again, this a lot of this comes from the experience that we saw in 2013 from our customers. Um, one of our clients, so actually one of our first managed webinar clients, they started do, starting to mix things up a bit, um, just to be a little bit more engaging um, with their audiences. So they run one webinar a month um, and they actually, I think their record was I think 1,500 registrations they actually had and the, their webinars attract over 500 people online at any given time. So they really are great to learn from. What they actually do is they use predisposing activities. So they have panel discussion webinars. Um, so they have a panel of experts, they're online, they're presenting on a certain topic, whatever that may be. But what they do beforehand is they send the registrants a case study that they'll be discussing during the event. That way, people know what to expect. People are much more involved, much more engaged, and much more interested in what the actual panel has to say. So. If you are doing a webinar and you do want people to engage thoroughly within the discussion and perhaps speak to each other and you know, be part of this community, definitely consider sending something out beforehand or even some tips on what to expect. And you may find that you may even increase your attendance rate as you do that. Um, polling as well. So polling is a great engagement tool and we're going to go into this a little bit in the next section, um, but definitely consider polling um, as a platform tool to engage people. So announcements. So announcements, as you can see, have popped up on the screen now. And the announcement tool is a great way to alert people of an important announcement, believe it or not. So one of the reasons that you could use this, um, while you do have the text uh, chat facility on the bottom left-hand corner, as people are engaging with each other, asking questions, providing technical responses, sometimes your message can get lost in and amongst that. So the announcement tool is a great way, as you can see here, to pop something, something up on the screen, alert people what's happening, in, and you can even change the colour if you like. Um, I've chosen orange because I think that's quite bright and that's telling people that you may want them to complete the survey. So great tool for if you don't want your message buried and perhaps you don't want to have to announce it over your presenter as a facilitator. And then we can just remove that and continue on with the show. Um, another great thing is the Q&A chat, fun chat functionality. 
Another great thing is the Q&A chat functionality. So once again, we've been using this throughout the session as well. So really make sure your presenters are familiar with using this. Um, as a moderator or facilitator, we definitely recommend that you moderate questions so you're not distracting uh, your presenter as they're speaking, um, especially if they are quite new to this type of technology. Another thing that you can do with this, if it is too distracting for your presenter, you can actually close that chat box down so that they won't be able to see it, but as a facilitator and your attendees, you can all actually participate in that chat box. And then hyperlinks embedded into PowerPoint. So this is a very new feature as well um, with the advanced PowerPoint tools. And this is great. Um, it's nothing worse than being online, trying to explain something to somebody and you can't show them. Um, hyperlinks are a great way, great way to redirect people to a brand new web page. So whether it be your website, whether it be some sort of call to action, hyperlinks embedded into your PowerPoints um, allow people to click on them, open a new window, and that's that. Yes, very good. Okay. Okay, so um, that's the engaging part of it. So hopefully that's given you some insight um, into how you can maybe train your presenters a little bit differently um, and keep them up to date with what's happening in the wonderful world of webinars. Um, let's go into the right tools for the right job. Yes. Uh, I'll take over this section. Um, so once again, going back to our customers, um, and we have all these amazing features and we do communicate them, but when do you use them and how do you use them and how does it work best to create engagement and keep other people on the other end from checking their emails? So um, we've put together a list of uh, the main features and when we think you should be using them. And the first thing we really want to touch on is polls. And we love polls. We absolutely love them. But if they're not used correctly, they can be much more detrimental to your actual webinar. So first of all, make sure you set your polls up in advance. That's a must. Um, if you're a really fast typer and you're a great editor, then obviously you can do them on the fly. But once again, really make sure that you set them up earlier. We recommend polling within the first 10 minutes of your webinar to poll early and make sure you tell people that you're actually, what, what's expected of them as well. Um, if you also want to keep polling throughout the actual webinar, do it through the middle and also do it through the end as well. Once again, it does depend on your audience and it does heavily depend on the format of your webinar. So just in terms of format, make sure that your polls are incorporated into your presentation before it's finalised. Um, say, for example, we're running a webinar, we've created the PowerPoint, we've uploaded it to the platform, and then we want to have some polls randomly. It's definitely a good idea to actually prepare your polls within the PowerPoint and have a blank slide that will um, update you and prompt you. So, for example, you could say, um, like we did, getting to know you, or you could even have something simple as poll one, or you could try and be a little bit more creative, just so you're prompting yourself, your presenter, and also the audience. Multiple choice, so at the beginning we launched a multiple choice poll and the idea of this is that people can obviously check as many options as they like and then the results are shared to everybody. So entirely up to you. It does get people a little bit more engaged and you can see the colours come up and it does look much nicer. I personally think it looks a lot prettier. So do I. Um, so it really depends on, once again, your audience. But you have the option to create anonymous polls, uh, multiple choice polls. You have the option to hide the results or maybe share them with everyone. And I think the number one thing with polls is to really keep it relevant. Um, I think it's the same with surveys. There's no point in uh, taking feedback from surveys if you're not prepared to do anything with that feedback, whether it be constructive or really complimentary. Um, I think it's the same with polls. So you can, there's no point talking um, about your online training webinar and then you go launch a poll that's talking about um, your next event that's coming up and it doesn't really tie in and it all comes really, becomes really messy to the people on the other end. Um, Definitely consider your polls um, and definitely make sure you incorporate that into the um, format of your presentation. Anything to add there, Michael? No, that's great. Uh, very true. Poll early, poll often, uh, and use them wisely. They're, it's such a great tool to use. They are. They're great. Um, Q&A is king, we find. Um, well, you're on the other end of the platform now, so you know that it's a one-to-many communication tool. Web conferences are much more collaborative, much more um, maybe one-to-one -one people talking on a teleconference, but with a webinar, it is predominantly one-to-many. Um, the Q&A chat, I think, is really there to eliminate that barrier that you have between yourself and your audience, which is the piece of technology that you're using. So definitely make sure you utilise the text chat box to your advantage. Um, so the question is when are you going to take these questions? So 
what we really recommend is thinking about the format of your webinar once again. So are you going to tell people to put questions in the text chat box throughout the entire webinar and then get to the end and answer them? Or are you going to break up your webinar into different segments? So say for example our webinar is on how to grow roses. So the first section of the webinar might be talking about where you're going to buy your roses. The second part of the webinar might be about how you plant them. And the third section might be about how you're going to perhaps maintain them. So after each of those sections, I might break for Q&A and prompt my moderator to ask. So I could say, Michael, uh, we've just finished the first section of the webinar. Are there any questions that are relevant to what we've been talking about? That way your audience is much more engaged, but once again, it really does depend on the format of your webinar and how many questions are coming through as well. If you have no questions coming through, then it can be a little bit embarrassing going to questions when there's nothing actually there. Um, a question at the beginning. So we did this at the beginning of the webinar um, for those of you in the live environment and we asked just a basic question just to get the ball rolling and to get you familiar with the platform. The idea is to use it as an icebreaker as well. So it, it serves two purposes really. So ask something that perhaps may be relevant to what you're talking about, but try and put a bit of fun in it and try, like Michael said, try to show people that you are human. Um, people get on a webinar, some people are very afraid of the technology, they've never been on this before, so they don't know what to expect. If they can have a bit of a laugh and you can break the ice, but you can also get them familiar with how to use something, it's a win-win situation. Encourage people to interact. Um, we've just recently launched our online training um, tips, 10 Steps to Make It Work um, guide and we did that in partnership with an organisation Connect Thinking and their number one thing to make it work is to encourage discussion and encourage individuals. Um, if you see one person really making an effort within the text chat box and they're really engaged, maybe try and encourage other people to do the same and don't point people out and try and embarrass them um, but try and encourage discussions um, and then you you'll see it flourish. Always respond, always have someone there on hand for technical responses. It just comes across as rude if you don't. And the transcript side of things, um, this is really underutilised um, and I don't think people really understand the potential. So what you can actually do as well as exporting reports of your attendees and their details and where they joined from, you can also export the polling, the presence manager, the in-room surveys and the transcript of your chat box. So that will pull everything out. One of the reasons this is really useful um, is say for example I've had this amazing webinar and everyone's so engaged and they all want to talk to me and they're asking a hundred questions. To answer them is going to be exhausting and not to mention everyone else on the other end of the line is going to get a little bit paid off. So what I would then do is export the transcript, let people know that I'm going to filter the questions, respond to them and then send out in a PDF the questions that were asked and the answers along with the recording within 48 hours. Once again, it really does, um, really does depend on your presenter and what they're willing to do but it definitely makes a difference and it shows people that you're going that extra mile. Um, so always cover that off with your presenter at the beginning, you know, what if we get too many questions, would you be willing to do this for us? And links as well, so another thing, so um, if you don't know, if you just type www and then followed by a web address, bear with me for one moment, there we go, I've just sent Redback Conferencing website straight through there. Once again, another way to get people engaged and I think with the chat box, what you'll start to see and what we've seen in a lot of our webinars, especially people who start to have series, is that the chat box is so important, not just for the Q&A, but for the building of the community. So you'll tend to see, you'll tend to find that if you do have regular webinars, you'll have the same people hop on all the time, they'll get to know each other, you may be talking about a new report that's just been released and then your attendees might start talking to each other about it and they start giving each other tips and advice and it's actually quite nice and it builds this little community um, and once again we keep going back to this word but it makes everything much more engaging. Okay and the big question, this is always the biggest question I think Michael. Definitely is. To webcam, yay or nay? Um, so and once again entirely up to your presenters, really we can't stress enough how much how much consideration you need to give your presenters with, um, with issues like this. So 
think about your webcam and whether you want it on throughout the entire duration. And the one question you're going to have to ask people is, are you comfortable with having your webcam on? Because presenting face-to-face -face and online is entirely different, and we're staring at ourselves now. And it's, it's, not, it's not the most flattering, you know, it's, <laughs> it can be a little bit uncomfortable. It's a little distracting. Yeah, it can be a little bit distracting just staring at each other in your own face. It's like talking to a mirror for an hour. Um, but definitely think about and ask your presenters whether they're going to be comfortable with this. And also think about your topic. If you're doing a really dry, maybe content heavy topic to your audience, maybe the webcams may be distracting to them. Um, maybe they don't want the webcams on there because they do want to focus on the content. So definitely start to think about that. And a great way to do that is to maybe choose what you want to do. Maybe you do want to have the webcams up for the entire session. In the feedback survey, ask your audience whether or not they enjoyed having the webcams up and then try and cater to their needs. However, what many of our clients have started doing is to what we like to call the best of both worlds, I guess, um, the intro, conclusion, and Q&A. So at the beginning, um, this is also just a little side note, um, always use photos of your presenters to put a face to the name once again to break down the barrier and show that they are human. So on the registration page, you've got a photo of your presenter. On the emails, you've got photos of your presenters. And then on the webinar, maybe have them pop up and talk about the introduction and what they're aiming to achieve throughout the webinar. And then tell them, or have your facilitator tell them, Sorry everyone, we're now going to close down the webcams to focus on the presentation and we'll open them back up for Q&A. And that way it's much more of a personal one to many when you are talking that Q&A at the end. Um, or none. Maybe you're um, presenting to people in rural and remote locations, um, as you can see a few people have said there in the chat box, and maybe you don't want to sacrifice um, you know, the actual presentation because of bandwidth issues, or maybe you just don't like them and that's fine. And, you know, it's a preference and it's based on um, your audience, it's based on the industry that you're in, and it's also based on your presenters. So definitely, definitely have a think about um, the webcams and once again, get your presenters involved as much as possible. Anything to add there, Michael? No, as you say, it's a powerful tool for engagement and people actually being able to see the presenter. But again, it's all dependent on the actual presenter because halfway through it, you're looking down, you're, you're presenting to a tiny camera, but you can see yourself and it can be quite distracting. So it's really about how comfortable they are. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Great. All right, so what we're going to do now, and I'm going to bring back up the slideshow, um, we're just going to show you something. Um, now, what this is, um, this is a video that we're creating. So we actually have um, joined forces, if you like, with the guys over at Presentability. And these guys have really, actually, let me bring this survey up. Okay. Okay. So now what? Um, first of all, we've just activated this in-room survey, um, which is exactly what we we're talking about early on in the session. So please feel free to provide your feedback um, as we go through um, a few little next steps, if you like. Please feel free to register for online training sessions. Um, if you click on this link, um, which is a little hand icon next to online training sessions, that will take that hyperlink directly to the online training sessions that we hold weekly um, with our friends, uh, the events team, which is Gavin, Michelle and Laura, who are fantastic. Oh, and the newest edition, Amy. Um, and then we're talking about content as well. So anything that you want in terms of content, please feel free to let us know. Click on that link. It'll actually go to all of our white papers, guides, and, um, and it, a lot of inspiration, if you like. Um, and as you're filling out that survey, one other thing that we're going to do is we're going to launch a video and this video has been, um, we joined forces with the guys over at Presentability, so Phil and Michael who are great friends of ours. Um, and the whole idea was to, we started to think, okay, how are we going to educate and inform people on how to present online in a fun way that's really educational but also really quirky and something a little bit different. So. We've created four modules um, and they are going to be released very shortly. Um, so the modules are going through your webinar interface, uh, marketing your webinar, creating engagement and the whole idea is for you as webinar organisers and webinar hosts to be able to provide your presenters with these videos as well. So when you get presenters on board, you don't have to do the training, you send them a few two minute videos, they're then inspired to actually hop online 
and actually um, present like a pro, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stream this video live from YouTube, which is also another feature um, that you might like to use in a webinar, which is a video player. Um, so I'm going to play that now, and please make sure you activate your sound. Um, it goes for about one minute, so I'm going to play that, and you'll hear from me shortly. Great. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight into what we have coming up. We had a lot of fun making it and I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to have a lot of fun watching it. Um, but I'm going to hand back over to Michael for the closing comments um, before we wrap it up for the day. Thanks, Sarah. Again, just this was all about showing you new features and functionalities on the platform. Any questions that you have, please feel free to contact us. Um, I will include my details as well in the follow-up email just if you have any questions on the advanced features of the survey model or the presence manager. Um, we're excited about the new developments and there's more to come, so thank you all very much for attending today. Great. And I'd just like to add thank you all for joining us on our first webinar. Um, this series has started off with a bang, I think, and it can only get better. Um, for those of you watching the on-demand recording version, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at marketing at redbackconferencing.com.au and we'll be able to provide you with any follow-up details. Otherwise, we do hope to see you at future webinars and we do hope that you use these amazing features and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye.